TCI Channel 63 presents... The TCI Sports High School Basketball Game of the Week. Tonight, it's the Dondero Oaks taking on the Troy Athens Red Hawks. Hello again, everyone. Dave Zorn along with Joe Abramson here at Troy Athens High School, where tonight, Joe, we've got some teams who are really battling this year, trying to get above 500. Yeah, a couple of teams kind of rebuilding, getting used to the new league as well. Both of them switched over from what was the MSAA now into the new OAA, into different divisions and everything. First time they've met this year. Again, trying to both get up to 500. Probably going to be a bit of a defensive struggle. A team that wins the rebounding battle is probably going to win the game. Let's take a look at some of our key players uh, for Dondero. The Oaks, uh, one of their key players, may be out of the game. Well, he's not going to be out of the game, but it's the first time in three games that that's the case. Chris Tillotson, not a starter, will play tonight. His first time in three games that he's played. He's had an ankle injury, turned it against Groves. 16 points a game average. Outstanding athlete. This is a guy who is an all-state football player as wide receiver, quarterback, defensive back. Whatever they needed him to do, he could do, and that's what he does on the basketball floor as well. Okay, and on the other side for the Red Hawks, a guy named Bagdasarian will be doing the work for them. Yeah, Vahan Bagdasarian is going to be the key for them. 16 points a game and almost 10 rebounds a game. He's going to have to get all the rebounds he can and get the outlet going. They play a man-to-man -man pressure defense, which means a lot of times the opponent, the Oaks in this case, are going to get fast break layups. If they don't make them, he's going to have to be deep and get the rebound and get his team on the offensive transition. Okay, we'll see what happens when the tip-off comes right at you right after these messages. Stay with us. Perspective with Neil Monroe is an informative talk show that discusses issues often overlooked by broadcast stations. Neil Monroe, the editor of the Oakland Press newspaper, will keep you abreast on hot topics, events, and issues taking place in Oakland County. So for news you can use, join Neil Monroe every week on the Oakland Press Perspective, Friday night at 8.30 on TCI 63. TCI Game of the Week. This week we take you to Athens High School here in Troy, Michigan for the battle between the Dondero Oaks and the Athens Red Hawks. Dave Zorn along with Joe Abramson here. Currently the records for these two teams. Dondero 3-5, and 5-11 five, five and overall. Athens 2-6 and six in the conference and 4-12 and 12 overall. And Dondero suffered a couple of close losses lately. A double overtime loss, I believe, to uh, Brandon and Ortonville Brandon and another game they lost by a point there you you know, at John the buzzer. There you see head coach of the Athens Red Hawks. And on the other side, John Sebastian, the Dondero Oaks head coach, who has uh, done a nice job in turning this team around. They had a rough season last year and uh, really uh, gotten the team a little bit more respect. Yeah, and again, you know, you take those couple of close losses and maybe you're maybe not quite at 500, but you're darn close. There you see the starters as we get underway. Back to Syrian Pogue, Roberts, Hardaway, and Sopel. And uh, Calgano, Kenna, Veers, Clark, and Lovelace for Athens. The Oaks come out quickly, and they come up with two points just like that on the scoring of Calcano. Kevin Calcagno with the first two points, and now the Oaks come down with a rebound, and they'll get a chance to add another two. Well, Athens went for a quick layup and, and had the shot, just didn't go, and Oaks were there to get that rebound. Oaks spread it out. They had an opening down the middle and had a man open, and now Hardaway going in for the layup gets it knocked away. And fouled, I believe by Calcagno. Yeah, he's going to go to the line for two. He had the breakaway layup and a smart play by Calcagno coming from behind. Goes for the ball. And not a bad foul. And it, yeah, and it, I, he hit him, I guess. Yeah. From from where we're from up here when we saw it live, it sure looked like a foul. And I wonder if he's related to those other Hardaway guys. <laughs> if he is, we're in for quite a game here. Hardaway hitting the first one. Anthony, one of the playmakers for this Red Hawks team. This is the second rebound taken by Veers and a whistle again. Well, yeah, Bagdasarian tried to steal from him, knocked it out of bounds. And he thought, Bagdasarian thought he was going to steal a call from the official, and he almost did. Here come the Oaks. 
Lovelace. Trying to go against Hardaway. Both set up. One shot goes out of bounds, and the Oaks still get it. Veers. Had an easy shot. Let's take a look from the outside, Joe. Yeah, really a set shot. And I'm assuming that at 6'1", 220, he's more of an inside player. I don't know if he's, if that's even in his range. We'll find out as the game goes on. And they're already hammering our cameraman down there, Brad Wicker. <laughs> Brad Bubba Wicker. He had to defend himself on that one. Oh, uh, he can handle it. <laughs> you know, he'll put his body in front of the camera to keep that camera alive. I know that. 2-1 the score, 6.44 into the first quarter. We're at Athens High School. The Red Hawks against the Oaks. Inside, Bagasarian wide open. Couldn't get it to fall, though. Good rebound by the guard, Hardaway, who was battling amongst the trees and managed to put down two. Well, that's huge for Athens. They, they usually play pretty good defense, according to the coach. It's putting the ball in the basket that's been a problem this year. And if they can get some offensive rebounds, that's going to going to keep him in the game a lot longer. Good hustle by Bagdasarian that time. He had good position and the Oaks player just turned around right into him. It was a jump ball call and possession goes to the Red Hawks. Let's see if the Oaks can't get their offense going soon. Probably see uh, Tillotson off the bench sooner than I was expecting. Here we see Pogue trying to drive and another whistle underneath. A lot of whistles early here, Joe. You know, you're going to get that in what, you know, two teams that aren't going to score a lot and haven't had a good record, they're going to commit some fouls. And right now, you know, that's Agnes what's Sarian happening. And off balance and just trying to get some kind of a call down there. Yeah, another thing happens, too, is when, when neither team has won a lot of games, they're each looking at this as maybe their best opportunity for the rest of the season to get one. Neither team in any kind of rhythm right now. Inside the Red Hawks get it to Nate Roberts for two. Hard to get in a rhythm when there's no crowd here yet, and part of that's just this game started so darn early. Yeah, game started about a half hour earlier than uh, most games do, because yeah. that uh, JV game went so quick. Well, and according, I asked uh, John Kroll about it. He said, "Well, they start their JV games early here because they tried they try to start it at seven. So for the Athens people, they're probably used to this, but the Dondero people aren't. So they're going to be arriving a little bit later, and uh, that's why you may not hear the crowd into it uh, this early. Yeah, there's a crowd." From outside, putting it up, nothing there for Kenaw. And coming up with it is Cal Cagno, back out up top. Lovelace, outside, working it to Kenaw. Inside, nice move, couldn't get it to fall, rebound by Bagdasarian, and here come the Red Hawks. And he is controlling the glass right now for the Red Hawks, and now he's going to try and convert on the offensive end. And it just won't fall for him. He's put a lot of hard work into getting that ball. He does it again. Two rebounds finally saying, comes up with it. Had your re that's, that's Moses Malone method of rebounding. <laughs> Miss a few. <laughs> Don't worry about your shooting percentage. And back to Sarian on the other end with a big turnover. And he's going to take it coast to coast. No, dishes it off. Back outside for a three. In and out. Strong rebound there by Nate Roberts. Ball bouncing around. Finally, the Oaks come up with it. Well, Cal Cagno that time was able to collect it and hold possession, and once again, Bagdasarian was behind him trying to make another steal. Pace starting to pick up. We saw Hardaway try to come up with a steal this time. He causes some trouble. Ball loose, and finally, coming up with it is Eric Cole for the Red Hawks, and we've got a foul. Well, when you play full court man to man like they do, and, and they never stop that either, it's going to be full court man to man pressure the entire game. You're going to create turnovers. This is after Hardaway tried the steal attempt. Now he comes back in from the other side and causes a little more confusion. And the loose ball finally picked up by Pogue. And again, you're going to get turnovers. The risk there on the part of the Red Hawks is that you're going to give up easy layups just as easily. There's a steal. Lovelace. Lovelace trying to make a move and does right to the hoop and picks it down. Good, good thing he made it. <laughs> <laughs> he had a teammate open way ahead of him, Kurt Kenna. Oaks had a dry spell, finally put one down here. Number 14, there you see so Sopel with his first two points. Yeah, Supo got the easy layup there, and part of it's just that the Oaks after the basket, nobody, nobody got back on defense and gave him free, free trip to the lane. Lovelace couldn't hit on the jumper. Here come the Red Hawks back. They lead 9-4, 338 
and counting here in the first quarter. Nice move underneath, and Eric Cole gets his first two points, and all five starters are on the board for the Red Hawks. Yeah, and the Gaffins caught on to something already, that they can take the baseline all, all night long on the Oaks. They're not guarding. If you pass it deep, they let you underneath, and if you can make those kind of layups, you're going to score a lot. And that's what the Oaks saw, and they call a timeout here as the Red Hawks are taking advantage of that baseline, Joe. Let's go down to the Dondero Oaks huddle and see what John Sebastian has to say. He's had a uh, pretty good season with this team. Come on. And trying to get that team fired up. Pushing the ball up the floor, we're not getting any defense, we're not getting any block out. You gotta push that guy to the sideline. Don't let him beat you baseline. Push him to the side, then they're, they're shooting a couple layups down there. Offensively, you're doing a good job, we're getting some good shots. You guys have been watching what's been going on, let's try and keep up the same thing, get that ball down low in the corner. Let's take a look at the Red Hawks on the move. Here is Supel on the move. And he dishes off underneath, finds the open man, and that is Pogue for a nice layup underneath. And it's the baseline that you just heard Coach Sebastian talking about. They're making him shoot from the outside, the one three-point attempt that they, they shot, bricked. You know, make him make those. Don't give him easy layups. 11-4, Red Hawks up with 3.20 left in the first quarter. In there now is Ajo, number 20, who takes a shot from outside, gets his own rebound, puts it back up, and a whistle underneath. Ajo not starting this game, but uh, he's one of the key players offensively for John Sebastian, a playmaker just like that man there, Hardaway, you see, for the Red Hawks. Yeah, another one of those key type of guys coming off the bench, and he's got himself to the line already. And whenever they do decide to bring Tillotson, it'll be interesting to see how, how long he can play without getting tired, because he hasn't played in the last three games, and just how strong his ankle is as well. But that, that bench, the depth that they have on their bench might be the equalizer to counter this 11-4 deficit that they have. There you see Hardaway. And he committed the foul. Oh, correction, the foul was on number 50, Nate Roberts. Underneath. Ajo couldn't hit either of them. And another whistle underneath, no. Yeah, well, Heard on the second offensive rebound got smacked before he could even put a shot up. In the NBA, he'd be at the line. Even in college, I think they might have given him that because the shot wasn't attempted on him because he got hit so hard. The foul on Supo, that's his hip first. And he stepped out. And that Ajo time. stepped out of yeah. bounds. So the Oaks come up empty-handed on that trip down the court. 3.05 left in the first quarter. The Lindsey Hunter move, get the ball and step out of bounds. <laughs> Joe Abramson, uh, a Lindsey Hunter fan. Big time. And, and proud of it. <laughs> Baseline shot, Pogue couldn't hit, and here come the Oaks. Ajo trying to drive against Hardaway, he's stopping him. Good defense by Hardaway. Hardaway gives him a little smile, now a little shoving under there. If you follow those two, that's a pretty good matchup down there. Baseline move, Oaks come back. Oh, good block. Bagdasarian took it right out of his hands. Bagdasarian is very impressive defensively. Look at this move. Him and Ajo and just smacking it. Kept it in. Supo now picks up for the Red Hawks. That's just good hustle by both those guys. Yeah. Ryan Supo for the Red Hawks setting it up. He's got Pogue in the corner on the far side. Comes back out to Nate Roberts. Roberts, the center. Way out of the top. And now the ball stolen, and who's going to get it back? Out of bounds, and it's going to be Red Hawks ball. Now we're finally going to see Chris Tillotson get into the game. Along with number 34, who isn't on. And that, <laughs> that one's not listed. Well, he was, and he's crossed off, so I'm assuming it's somebody else. Kurt Foster is who they have. Well, this guy doesn't look like he's 6'2 and 200 pounds, no. <laughs> Well, maybe, yeah, could be. Inside, Supel keeps it in, but it goes in the hands of the Oaks. Here comes Ajo now, going against Hardaway again. 
He'll set it up. Ron score in there now for the Oaks. In the paint is Hurd and shot off. Nothing there. Hardaway, the guard again with a rebound, this time defensively. And he pushes it down court quickly. Nice movement. Pogue back. And Supel puts it down on the baseline. Good movement by the Redhawks. Nobody forced a shot, and they did give it to the man with yeah. the open shot. Good movement, and good thing Supel got rid of it quick because Bagdasarian was probably in the key for about 2.9 seconds. <laughs> He's stretching it, wasn't he? Yeah, well, and it's not his fault. You know, you just don't expect that many passes down low, but Pogue, there was no way he could get a shot off. He was behind the basket. Redhawks in control, 13 to 4 right now. 49 seconds left in counting. You can see the clock. Here in the first quarter. Ball stolen, knocked away by Bagdasarian, and then retrieved by Hurd. Mike Hurd gets it back. Here's Tillotson with a baseline drive, knocked away by Nate Roberts. A little tentative on the drive, and you kind of might expect that with a guy with a bad angle. Supel gets it knocked away. I think Supel wanted to go behind the back, and Aho got it. And here come the Oaks. 25 seconds and counting. Ball knocked away. Oaks again. Aho on the perimeter, being guarded by Hardaway. Let's see if they play for the last shot. I think they will. They're slowing it down a little bit now. They'll start their movement at about 10 seconds. Here they go. Inside, in the paint. Tillotson back out. Off. The shot was off by Hurd, and now the Redhawks get a chance at the buzzer. They're not going to get it off. Cole no. Can't get it off. It wouldn't have counted anyway. And that's how we end the first quarter here at Troy Athens High School. We see John Kroll looking at the Red Hawks there under control. They've got a 13-4 lead. Still anybody's ball game in a very low scoring first quarter for both teams, really. Yeah, for both teams, but I think you know, Athens has to be a little better than the Oaks. You, you can't just you can't score four points in a quarter. Let's go down to John Kroll's huddle. Don't follow him underneath. Lead him coming over the top. They will get good help. Then on the fast break, they're doing too much policy. You had him open a little early, and you over dribbled. Hey, listen, we made three passes. You had to make too many passes. Get that guy who's open soon. Get him the ball, let him get it. We should have about four or five more layups here. Now, come on. A lot of unforced errors because we're making too many passes. Okay? Get the ball ahead early. Follow him down in case he misses it for the football. Good job on defense. Let's go. Let's go, fellas. John Kroll down there talking about the passing. Let's take a look at this one. This yeah, is, where they got this the is too many passes. <laughs> and that's, again, it's only because Pogue's underneath and there's no way to get a yeah. shot off. And fortunately, he makes the shot. More fortunately, he took the shot quick enough to not get the three-second call on back to Syria. Don't forget to tune in next week. Uh, we'll be in Clawson to see the Trojans taking on the Yellow Jackets of Avondale. Catch all the action Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. right here on TCI 63. Yellow Jackets always a good run and gun and team. Yeah. Interesting to see their style going up against Clawson. Here come the Oaks now. Trying to get back into some kind of a uh, close battle here with the Red Hawks. They're down 13 to 4. Well, <laughs> Tillotson got away with the travel and then, then they called a foul. <laughs> and one of the Supel's trying to remind the ref about that travel. Yeah, they're looking. <laughs> Super got his second foul instead. Aho throws it in. Hurd off to Aho in the corner for three. No, it's short. Rebound taken by Monstar, though, for the Oaks, and they're alive. Red Hawks clogging it up in that zone and not giving the Oaks much room inside. Now there's a switch coming out. Oh, in the corner, Tillotson for three. It's off. Rebound strong by Pogue. And here comes Supel. Supel quickly nice to pass. Bagasarian. He's got it. Good pass, good catch, too. Right now, they're just, they're too quick for the Oaks. The Oaks have to come up with some sort of, some sort of gimmick on their Here's defense. a three on one. Can't hit. Damn they do. Followed up nicely by Bonstar there for two. And this time the Oaks get back on D. But still they're allowing these guys penetration as you saw there. 
Pogue tries the three, can't hit. Bomsker with the rebound, and here come the Oaks. Yeah, well, that's maybe one of the few times they made a bad decision. You could have waited for a longer time later in the possession to take three. You're going to take a few more passes before you, you know, accept that. Athens with a nine-point lead, and in this game, it's been a comfortable lead because neither team has really put on an offensive scoring uh, barrage yet. That's a foul. This Tillotson with the drive, and he'll go to the line. Well, I think he went to the hole with the intention of drawing the foul, and if you make the field goal, that's a bonus. The foul should be on back to Syrian. Took it right in the head and almost made the shot. John Sebastian looking on, trying to get his team. Back to within uh, shooting distance here. They're down by nine. And a substitution as we see number 34 heading out. And they'll try to get that number for you. Tillotson in there at the line. Tillotson hits. Let's take a look at Ajo coming down and dishing off. When rebounding has been big for both teams. And here, offensive rebounding for the Oaks gets him a basket as Tillotson split the free throws while we were at that replay. Monscar hitting that one on the replay. Here comes Hardaway. Supel inside finds Bagdasarian underneath and a foul. A foul coming on number 30, Mike Hurd. Again, it's just the, the quickness of the Red Hawks that the Oaks aren't able to pick these guys up as they break to the basket. A lot of cutting, a lot of screening. And usually it's getting them easy layups. This time it draws a foul and gets them to the free throw line. Either way, it's you know, so either way it's catching them out of position. There you see in there now number 32, Lovelace back there. Mahan Bagdasarian hits his first. 16 to 7 the score, 5.59 left here in the first half. We're at Athens High School, where the Red Hawks have dominated pretty much against the Oaks. Here Bagdasarian hits them both. He's up to six points. And leads all scores. That's pretty, not a good foul. <laughs> pretty balanced scoring by the Red Hawks. You see everybody who started on the scoreboard. And Hardaway spread with, the ball out. Hardaway with that reach in foul that kind of, you know, the kind of pressure defense they've been playing has been great, but that's the quote the Cardinal really reached instead of used his hands instead of his feet. Was out of position and the ref will always call the foul in that situation. Aho now. Top. Makes a move on Hardaway in the paint, puts it up. Just can't get it to fall. Hardaway with the rebound, pushes it up court quickly. Pogue, one on one. Loses the ball, gets back out with it. And they'll set up. Super. Calling out the signal now. 5.25 left in the second quarter. Baseline move. Pogue can't hit it. It's the time you want to use the glass. Yeah, once again, though, the baseline is there. Hardaway for three. Well, they finally hit. Finally hit the three. That's a great shot by Hardaway. Even though Pogue missed the layup, they're still getting easy trips along the baseline. Lonskow back up top. This is for two. Ajo couldn't hit. Underneath is Hurd and a foul. Well, really, Hurd's been, if, if you can find a bright spot so far for the Oaks, he's been hit with the offensive rebounds. Had the one put back for the layup. Had a couple others, and right there, gets the ball and gets himself to the line. Coming out is Supel. You see Supel with his third foul and going in for him. Number 33, Pete Toko. You see Hurd at the line. 20 to 7, the Red Hawks have increased their lead. Here's Hurd hitting his first. Let's take a look at Hardaway from outside. Yeah, right after Pogue had rebounded the missed layup, got it out to, got it out to Hardaway for the wide open three point shot. Hurd couldn't get the roll, but he got one, and it's 20 to 8 now. 452 and counting here in the second quarter. Bagasarian looking for room in the paint, and he's fouled. A little push. It's like it was Hurd on the push, and Bagasarian goes down. And it shouldn't be enough to get him to the line yet. Yeah. It's not. Not a shooting foul. They're not taking the us yet. Here's a little push. They pushed them a couple times, and then they called about the second or third push. It's about how it should be. Give them, give them one. Pogged inbound. Bagdasarian on the perimeter looking for some movement. Gets it up top to Hardaway now. 
Hardaway to set it up. The baseline has been very effective for the Red Hawks. Most of their points coming from underneath. And they go from outside. Hardaway bombed on the three-pointer last time. This time couldn't hit. Oh, he backed up a little on that one, yeah. too. He's two or three feet beyond the line. Ajo on the layup, he hits. A little running, running leaner in the lane. And that uh, can help Good the Good defense Oaks. there by the Oaks. Yes, love plays charge. offensively, going right into Pogue. And it's you know questionable whether he had position or not, but it's a case of uh, kind of looking out of control offensively that the official is not going to give you that call. You see, he snuck in, got position maybe a little late, but you know I'd have to agree with that call by the official. The Oaks come back with a press, and the Red Hawks break it. Agnesarian had a man open. He's got him there still, and he puts it down for two. That's number 52, Lafif. Well, yeah, he had his choice between Lafif and Toka. They're both open. <laughs> kind of nice when you have two guys waiting for layups. Lafif makes it 22-10 now. From outside, bombing away. The Oaks can't hit there. That was Bonskar on that one. Quickly, Pogue tried to get it. The hits the ref and goes out of bounds. Yeah, pass went behind him. That would have been a tough catch. Been tough to have caught it and not traveled with it. 333 left here in the second quarter. And now the Red Hawks come back with a press of their own. Oaks can break it here, and they do. Two on one, three on one, and the ball gets away. Intended down there for number 54, Calcagno. Threw a little behind him. That's um that's not the kind of mistake you expect to see this late in the year. By now there should be some chemistry there with those guys. Especially in a three-on-one situation yeah. where you're not going to get many of those against the Red Hawks tonight. Well, it's funny, you know, the Red Hawks you know, get man-to-man -man press all the time. You really should get those all night, but they haven't been. Yeah. Here's a quick one underneath. Going to get down Pete Toko for his first two points. Coming off the bench. Here come the Oaks. Well, they they broke it again. They had a three on two that time. Yeah, they had another opportunity. The opportunities are there, but you've got to recognize them, but you've got to have the quickness to do it. And both defensively and offensively, they've been out quick by the Red Hawks all night. Well, I'm going off on Scar, checking in now. And looks like it's number 20, Chad Miller. There he is for the Red Hawks. Three minutes left here in the first half at Athens High School. No press now for Gondero. Hardaway will bring it up. I don't think they can afford, well, not, not yet. They don't need to press, and I don't think they can afford to. If you're not quick enough, you can't take that risk and give up all these easy layups. Hardaway over to Bagdasarian. He's got Toko and Lafif down there. Inside, heavy traffic there. Toko lost it. Lafif over there working on Kanaw. Aho giving it up. Calcagno. Von Scour now. Back out. Kanaw hits. Kirk Kanaw hits his first. Yeah, good open 16 foot jump shot. Nate, good move, good ball movement that time. All the passes were good and they always threw to open guys. They didn't try to force anything. Cut it down to 12 from way outside. That was Miller. Couldn't hit. And here come the Oaks again. Trying to cut the lead now down to 10. And they had Kanaw open for a layup if you can get the pass over the top. And they chose not to. Ball loose and then picked up by the Oaks in the paint from the free throw line. Can't hit. That was Calcagno and here come the Red Hawks again. Down to a minute 40 left in the half. Agdesarian trying to make something happen. Goes back out. Open on the far side and now inside Toko. Toko trying to force it up uh, among the trees. There are a couple guys, and this one's off the way. A lot of blocks by the Oaks. But can they come up with a rebound? Agasarian almost got it to go, and he was fouled. Yeah, they're just controlling the offensive glass as they have been all night. First time Toko took that under when he tried to force it. It's one of those things that you're not going to be able to realize until later, but he had Bagdasarian open for a layup if he dishes underneath when the double team came to him. But th that was well before that happened there. And that was just like about the third offensive rebound on that trip. But if he looks off right when he first goes under, he's going to hit him for an easy layup. 
Bonskar a call with a foul. That's his first for the Oaks. Agassarian misses here. He was two for two before that one. Both Bagdasarian and Hardaway leading the way with six points for the Red Hawks. Mahan can't hit that one either. So tough break for the Red Hawks on that trip to the line. Coming up on a minute now. Left here in the first half. You see the score and the time. Out up top, working the perimeter, trying to get something underneath. So that's what they look, look like they're trying to get. And they force yeah. it in there, and they do. He's running a lot of screens, a lot of weak side passing, and finally got the easy layup there. And Jason Veer is there on the bucket. Two points for him, his first two points. And the Oaks get a break as they get it again. They break it. Tough, well. <laughs> tough bounce pass, a little too high and almost stolen away that time by Miller, but Miller commits a foul. They should get Aho to one and one as well. I believe. So Aho will go to the line now. He was 0 for 2 his first trip to the line, so he's got to make amends here now. 44.1 seconds left here in the first half. Couldn't hit it. And a big break for the Red Hawks. And Let's they can work they, for the last shot possibly if, here. If they choose to, I don't. They don't have to, yeah. but it's not, they may want to. You see the well, by now, lead. Yeah, now they've got it down almost to 30. Probably one of those, if, if you get a good open shot, take it. Other than that, wait till the end. Yeah. Miller and Toko exchange passes. Toko gets it back. Bagdasarian was open, but from behind. Lovelace comes up and knocks it away, and here come the Oaks. They'll get a last chance shot here. Yeah, great defense by the Oaks, and that was where that double team collapses. You hit the open guy. But this time they got some help and were able to prevent the easy layup. Miller working tough against Aho. Aho looking for help right in the hands of Hardaway at the buzzer. That will not count if it did go. And that is how it ends here for the first half of action at Troy Athens High School. The Red Hawks and John Kroll's team. Very successful in this first half. They're up by 10, 24-14. On the other side, John Sebastian's team has some work to do, Joe. They got a little bit of work to do, but the second quarter, a bit of an improvement. I think they were only outscored 11 to 10 in that quarter. Pick up the defense a little bit and make the layups. If you just make your layups you know, and your free throws, it's a lot closer game than this. That's your score at halftime. We'll be back right after these messages, 24-14. The Red Hawks over the Oaks. We'll be back right after this. If you wish a video cassette of TCI Sports, the cost is $25. Send a check payable to TCI, along with your name, address, and the names of the teams that played in the game, to TCI Sports Videotapes, 4500 Delamere Boulevard, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48073. Remember to tell us which game you wish to receive. And thank you for watching TCI Sports. The TCI game of the week, the Dondero Oaks taking on the Athens Red Hawks. And the Red Hawks up by 10, 24-14. Let's take a look at some of the action in the first half. A lot of turnovers both ways in this uh, first half, which I guess means it is the defensive battle that we expected. Tiaho bringing the ball down the floor now for the Oaks. There, Miller good pressure to by at it. Good pressure by the Athens Red Hawks. And there'll be a turnover coming up right there. So that how, that's pretty much how the first half went. And, and the second half starts with a missed shot. And the second half starts with a missed shot, and the Oaks come back with it. And it's key to the Oaks, really, to come out and score some points quick. You know, the defense is fine. Get get the rebounds. They've, I mean, you've got to make Athens adjust their their plan, their game plan a little bit, and you can't do it if you don't make your shots. They're back to Sarian making a, an attempt for a steal, and they came right back to the Oaks. Aho now looking underneath. He's got the big center. Turning Jason Beers. Couldn't hit, and here comes Cole for the Red Hawks. Cole's taking it over his man. No, won't go. 
Rebound Oaks. Well, good defense by Cal Cagno. Tried to draw the charge. Didn't get that call, but bothered the shot enough that it couldn't go in. Here's a steal. Miller for the Red Hawks. Picks it up. Started closely by Lovelace. Finally gets it across. Now Hardaway to set it up. Hardaway and Bagdasarian leading all scorers with six points in that first half. The Oaks pretty much spreading it out. They've got uh, everybody who scored with two points. Nobody really getting above that yet. Nobody taking charge for the Oaks offensively. Red Hawks spreading it out and taking their time. I think we might be able to see a lot of this. <laughs> in the second half. Shot from outside, missed, and here come the Oaks. You're going to spread it out and just pass it around the top like that, and all you're going to get out of it is a three-point attempt. That's, that's not effective offense. you got to you're gonna do all that get a layup out yeah, of it. Yeah, they've got to get two points out of it somehow. Get a better shot, anyway. Yeah. Not a three-point attempt, but hey, they set it up again. Spread it out. Bagdasarian open. There is the shot you're looking for the first time. Play. Well, they had Roberts trying to post up, and Bagdasarian came from behind him on the weak side, and nobody came and guarded him. Easy layup. And the pressure defense on the other end. Wow. Lovelace gets it stolen by Miller. Probably traveled when he slid with the ball, but yeah. the ref let that go. Chad Miller in there. Supel uh, is out. He's got three fouls. He was a starter. He came out, and Chad Miller has done a great job in their number 20 for the Red Hawks. Yeah, that's a smart move. Keep Supel out for a little longer, just in case you really need him at the end. He's probably one of their better foul shooters. You know, if you keep the lead, there's going to be more foul shots late in the game. Cole got a tough shot. Ball goes off. Bagdasarian ended up in the hands of Roberts, and Bagdasarian had it again, and another foul here for the Oaks. You know, that time I think it was Steve, or uh, no, it was Mike Mark Lovelace who uh, hacked him from behind trying to block the shot and sends him to the free throw line. Oh, there it is. Got a lot more hand there that time. At the line is Bagdasarian. He's 500 from the line. Adam Sandler. Floyd. Is that uh, your caller? Yeah. Adam so. Sandler look alike. Not, not exactly, but a little bit. So, Bahan, if you hear that, that's uh, Joe Abramson. Hey, that's the guy that looked like him. What if uh, Billy Madison, like the best movie out right now? Yeah. Well, that's the best movie out right now, but. I think so. It's good. Tillotson checks in. Going out is Lovelace. And Bahan will get another shot. From the distance, I can see what That's why I don't mean he's like, he's like they're related. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bagdasarian gets his I don't think second. there's a whole lot of work opportunities for Adam Sandler to collect like anyway, so it's no big deal. What's that? Um, what is that? That's, they're not giving him that. That's strange. That shouldn't, that shouldn't count, should it? Or did it? I don't think so. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Eric Cole took the ball and put two points down for the opposite team. No, no, that's, that's his own basket. That's the basket yeah. he wants to score in. But, but I don't, don't think it was it. his ball. They don't count it. The ball was never inbounded. The ball was never inbounded. That's right. <laughs> he just threw it up and said, hey, nobody wants to inbound the ball. But that. But all the Oaks were not. But some, the then the Oaks should get a five-second call for not yeah. inbounding the ball. Not inbounding the ball. Okay. Excuse us, we're in the Bahamas for a moment, but uh, uh, so were the refs. <laughs> they had to talk it over, too. So the Oaks did get to inbound it again. Offensive foul in call. Here's Veers, puts it up. Veers couldn't get it to fall. The Oaks can't buy a bucket right now. And they're, and they're, but they're getting the shots. You know, that's what we talked about in the first half. They're getting, if they make these layups, they're in the game. Oaks to inbound. Tillotson. Oh, Tillotson open for a three. Takes his time, sets up. No, it's short. Veers goes off his hand. Jason Veers knocked it out, unfortunately, for the Oaks, and the Red Hawks get it back. Well, Tillotson shot good rotation on the shot. Here's what happened. You see nobody there for the Oaks, and uh, I think Pogue did the right thing by just putting it up. Well, you right try. You know, if they, if they let you get away with it, great. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh. Tillotson's shot on the other end. Had good rotation. Looks a little flat, though, which is kind of to be expected for a guy that's been out for a few weeks. Still, still 27 14, and another whistle down there. Looks like it's going against 44, Moscow. Yeah, Bagdasarian took him to the hole, and I don't think they're going to call that a shooting call. Probably should. Well, he was trying, yeah, just throw it up at the yeah. rim as you get hit. <laughs> Try and sucker a shooting call out of it, but he couldn't do it. Bogan bounce to Miller, now Hardaway up top, working on Aho. Over! Shot out! That's out! Pulled. Hits the rim, bounces back out. And it's just a running game, who's gonna get there? Tillotson off his leg. Not a, not a really good time to pass, a little short distance between the two, and a, not a good time for a bounce pass. Well, especially if it's going to be at his feet. you got to you know, bounce it to his hands or uh, maybe lob it to him. You know, quarter's half's five minutes old, like combined scores three nothing. So neither team really defensive battle. I'm fuego, I should say. No. <laughs> Magnusarian making his move off the glass. There you go. Oh, Roberts with a rebound, and Roberts and Magnusarian both that, battling That's a shooting it. call. That's a shooting call that time. Magnusarian holding his shoulder a little bit. Yeah, they were both, uh, both you saw both Nate Roberts and Magnusarian battle for the same rebound. Let's take a look. Now, you'll see Roberts get the rebound here and the put back. Doesn't get this to go, and both of them come up with it. Bagdasarian has it, and he's going to get hammered right there, right there. That by Ajo, and his right shoulder was what he was holding. That was it, and that's where he was hit by Ajo. Damn. Hey. Might yeah. have <laughs> it helped his free throw. Yeah. Can't complain now. 28-14 the score now, with 2.56 left in the third quarter. Bagdasarian up to 10 points, makes it 11 now on the night. 29-14 with 2.55 left. Red Hawks put pressure on. Tillotson up court quickly to Ajo, good and he pass. puts it on the board of ears. That was a good one. Now, you know, you watch it and say, man, you hope you see this guy coming from your left, and he did. And that time they made the pass right too. And we saw in the first half they were throwing it behind guys on those breakaway layups. Perfect execution on that situation. And their first points of the half. Hardaway, Miller, Bagdasarian exchange passes now. Trying to find the open Red Hawk. Well, the last time we saw them do this much passing, they settled for a three-point attempt. So what they do here. Good defense put on with the Yokes for the first time. You can really see they're clogging it up in the middle and not allowing anything, baseline or otherwise. Well, Pogue's got the baseline if they, well, they didn't see him, but he had it. Now he comes back over to the side of the ball and it won't be there. Miller now to Hardaway and they continue the rotation up top. Pose. Got a foul there. Oh, yeah, Cal Cagno was all over me. Actually grabbed his arm. Let's take a look. Cal Cagno has him trapped in the corner. Pogue tries to get away and the well, hold comes well, he right thought about in taking here. Look at around the other side. There do you see it with the left arm. Yeah, and right now I think Don Darrow wants to figure out defensively what they're going to have to do. They are preventing them from getting layups, but now they've got to get the ball. So John Sebastian calling a timeout with 149 left in the third quarter. His team trailing 29-16. And Cal Cagno just called for the foul. Don't forget right after the ball game, it's Pat and Bubba as they take you to a new and interesting place each month on Roadshow Video. This uh, this time the guys will visit Autorama. No way. Yes, from wow. Cobo Hall. That's so join cool. the guys right after tonight's game. So if you missed Autorama. Are they, they going to get that whale video on? A whale? whale. Is it, what's that now? Hobo Hump and Slobo Babe. That's a Great song. song. Good song. It. Yeah. It's really cool. Man, I'm getting old. Well. They, I'm missing out on all this. Get get some get some whale. And Last get, year some Beastie it? Boys. White Zombie. White Zombie you were yeah. teaching me about, yeah. and now it's uh, whale. whale. Well, Green Day would be good too. Okay. Green Day I have heard. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> John Sebastian trying to get his team fired up here in the second half. They still trail as John Kroll's team pretty much in control throughout this game. 29-16 right now, and the Red Hawks will inbound. Eric Poe to inbound for the Red Hawks. Coming right up the middle is Bagdasarian. He hits the side of the rim, or the backboard, excuse me. 
Now he gets his rebound, and the paint puts it down. Good hustle by Magnuson. I was going to say, he's just hustling more than anybody else on the floor right now, yeah. and it's getting him all the baskets. And that's how he started the game. He started with some turnovers and uh, making a basket and uh, assisting on another one. So yep. He's been uh, the workhorse in this game. Not to take anything away from the other players, though, for the Red Hawks. They've all spread it out evenly. Nice movement inside. Ajo found his man, and Kanawha couldn't get it, but getting it that time, number 34, and uh, still, because we couldn't get anybody down there. <laughs> <laughs> Might be Kurt Foster. We don't know. Bagdasarian hits. So Bagdasarian has caught fire here in the third quarter and taken control. Now could pass that time as well. Got it to him with the double team, able to get him an easy layup. <laughs> well, now they may play for the last shot. Inside, and look at that, the give and go, and it worked. But oh, nice held move. On to it. Tillotson couldn't get it to fall. Battling for it, back to Syrian, and here comes Pogue and a two-on-one. Hustling back of the Oaks. Pogue couldn't hit, they have got two shot foul coming up. Yeah, Pogue kind of, he held it for a little too long. He couldn't hit the guy on the left on the fast break. And actually did about the only thing he could do, go up strong with it. Oaks player might have been able to get a charge call out of it if he would have planted himself, he didn't do it. The only other option Pogue would have had would have been just to drop it behind his back. He had one of his men trailing, but you don't even know if he saw that. As it is, he gets the foul and gets two free throws. Number 34, that is Frank Thumer for the Oaks. He was listed as number 40. He is a uh, sophomore and has been added to the varsity team. So that is the correction on that. Pogue hits again on the second free throw. From the Oaks. Clark in there, Greg Clark, number 10. This one goes off the hands of Kanawha and out of bounds. Oaks will get it back. Not a lot of time. 8.4 seconds they have to set up. And that's left here in the third quarter. Up top, not much time to shoot. They're gonna go in the corner to Tillotson. Tried the three, couldn't go. They've gotta get it away. And, well, well, they've got a little bit of time now, 0.7 seconds. They have just enough to maybe get a shot off here as Bagdasarian couldn't hold on to it in the corner. One good thing about this not being the pros, and the pros, they'd go, no, it's 0.8, and they'd make you wait forever to fix the clock. <laughs> Ball goes out of bounds, and that'll do it for the third quarter. And the Red Hawks pull away. 35-18 the score now. And uh, all on the back of uh, Bagdasarian. Let's uh, get a chance to go down to the Red Hawks huddle if we can here and uh, take a listen to John Kroll as he talks to his team. Once we get, if we get a clean rebound, we'll go out of there by a minute. Okay? Our problem is we're not getting a clean rebound because we're tipping, tipping, tipping. So get down, get the rebound. If it's a guard that gets it, come out with a dribble and then just fill those lanes. Just fill those lanes. Just got to keep playing defense. Don't let the man on top penetrate. Make him pass the ball. Hey, when you're away from the ball, open up and see the ball because we want you to put your hand in there and knock some of those away. You're, you're centered on your back, you're throwing the ball right by your shoulder. Everybody else is helping. You've got to help them. Okay? Open up, see the ball. All right, right here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come off a little farther on the ball. John Kroll talking to his team, the Red Hawks in command, 35-18 going into the fourth quarter. And that whole idea of getting the clean rebounds is real simple. <laughs> he recognizes they can't match up quickness-wise with the Red Hawks, and if they get those fast breaks, they're gonna get layups all day long. There you see Athens pulling away again, 11 to four in that third quarter. Dondero played uh, pretty much even with them in the second, and they tried to do that here in the third. Well, and yeah, the difference you could see there was the consistency yeah. that Athens has as opposed to Dondero's one Plus solid a, quarter. Plus a big nine-point third quarter for Bagdasarian, who got nine out of the 11 points for the Red Hawks. Bagdasarian now with 15 points on the night leading the way. Here come the Oaks. They've got a lot of work to do here in the fourth quarter. Aho over to 
Boomer. But it's gonna be tough for the Oaks because down 17, they don't have an up-tempo type of offense to get a lot of two-pointers. As far as three-point shooting goes, I don't think they've made a shot beyond 15 feet all night. Kanaw driving. So you know, there. You know, it's just their style of play does not fit what they need to do. Maybe defensively they can come up with some turnovers. That's what well, they do. They need, that, they need yeah. that as well. That's yeah. what they. Yeah, you not only have to make up 17 points, you yeah. got to shut them out for the quarter. So maybe defensively that can help. Well, that would have been neat if that had gone in. You know? <laughs> it had been like on ESPN. Yeah. There's Clark going coast to coast. Couldn't get it, but he's fouled by Miller. So Greg Clark comes in. And gets a chance to go to the line and put in a couple from the well, line. Admit it, you wanted that shot to go in, though, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes. Now, yeah, there gets himself to the line. That's a good way to score. Score with the clock stop. Yeah, he makes that. And if you make some great call, you know, you, you, you could be like those Texas high school guys. Yeah. Everyone would be sick and tired of your voice so fast. <laughs> we might be in the ESPYs next year. Oh, huh? God. Oh, you're dreaming now, Joe. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Clark. Puts it down. Greg Clark gets his first point of the night. Coming from the free throw line. 6.44 left in the game. Yeah, the big key, though, is you got to rehearse that spontaneous reaction. That's right, that's right. What do you say in those situations? <laughs> that's what you got to practice. Three Red Hawks had it, and it's a traveling call. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're dominating well, and everybody's well, getting in on well, it. Well, coach told you in the end of the quarter, stop tipping the rebounds, grab it. So all three of them grabbed it. <laughs> and they traveled. So because of that, the Oaks get it back and get a chance to get three on this trip down. We were up top to 30 herd, and now a chance for the Dondero Oaks to come up possibly through a four now if they go for the three. They haven't been successful on the three-point attempts, though. And, and the steal for the Red Hawks. See if they try to take any time off the clock or if they try to score quick. Hardaway way out up top and Aho with him there. Oh, trying to do that baseline move and we've got a foul on the defense and that's going against number 30 Hurd. Mike Hurd with the foul. Yeah, well now they come out and guard him and not give him the easy trip to the baseline, but you got to do it without fouling him. There you see, he just couldn't get in position quick enough. Better acting job might have gotten the call the other way, but you, know, you gotta you gotta scream and yeah. don't use your hands, just land on your back. There going out is Chad Miller. He had a great game and they're filling in for number 14, Ryan Supel, the starter. Bagdasarian couldn't hit. Nate Roberts battling for it and goes in the hands of Aho. Aho pushes it down for quickly. Well, and Supel's back in there, and again, I'm I'm guessing he's probably their best free throw shooter, which is why they held him out. You're gonna get to the point where the Oaks have to start committing fouls, and he might be the guy you want at the line. Oh, working against two Oaks, gets it down. <laughs> Nate Roberts puts it down for two. Yeah, Pogue the Super to Roberts, and you know, forget free throws, just take the easy layup. Those are the first two points we've seen here in the fourth quarter. Or excuse me, Clark hit one from the free throw line. <laughs> Oaks cannot buy a bucket underneath there. There's a foul, and Lovelace will go to the line. How many times have we seen it just bounce out of the basket yeah, for the, the Oaks? And the number of missed shots they've had from, you know, five feet and in, uh, it, that's really been Here's the major Hardaway. factor in the game. Hardaway rubbing his calf. Well, if he's even, if it's remotely serious, he's done for the night. Yeah, they don't want to take any chances, not in this game. 37-19, Red Hawks lead over the Oaks. 518 left in the game. And you see head coach John Sebastian talking to his Oaks. Did they ever show any John Sebastian videos on Roadshow video? I don't know. That's another did video he, you Did he ever see. make videos? I, I that was before video, wasn't it? It was before video. He showed the Welcome Back Cotter open. It's a video, I guess. That, that's for those youngsters who don't know who John Sebastian is. Let's go down to this John Sebastian. You got to keep going. Turn, some turnovers into some 
What else can you say to your team, really? Uh, John Sebastian's team's been battling tough and uh, just hasn't been working for them. Let's uh, tune into the Master Angler Show when you get a chance, Thursdays at 7 p.m. right here on TCI 63. And again, Joe told you last time that that uh, saw, uh, Mark's hat, really, that sign up there, or rather the advertise. lack of the sign. There's nothing up there. You advertise on these. Doesn't have anything up there. You know. So call 549-7765. Ask for Mark Gomez. Tell him you want to advertise on his hat. It's only going to cost you five dollars. That's there Mark Gomez right there, the master angler. The original master angler. The original master. He doesn't want to take master credit. angler emeritus. <laughs> Lovelace hits them both, and it's 37-21 now. Oaks putting some Good pressure pass. on, but again, when they do that, that opens up a man underneath as Roberts is open for another easy two. Great pass by Bagdasarian. They did that uh, press again, Joe, and it uh, opened up a man underneath. Yeah. And here's an over and back call. That's, that's the gamble you take with the press, but at this point, you know, losing by 20 or losing by 30 is the same, you know, it's yeah. the same as losing by one, so you might as well just take the gamble. Take the chances. And yeah, that's what they're doing. There's Tillotson. 4.55 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. Pogue, who's had a pretty good night down there on the baseline. Yeah, he'd, he'd probably be the uh, best uh, Taco Bell and some hero if we had that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's Supel trying to get it to Pogue. Yeah, you don't throw it off your own guy's knees. He was right on the baseline and would have been out of bounds if he hit him. Pogue is trying to get out of his way so yeah. he can maneuver down there. Here's a foul underneath. That's where you're falling out. You, you look to throw it off someone's legs, and then the first thing you see is your own teammate. It's not good. And the foul there, down there is on Roberts, Nate Roberts. And it's only the third on Athens. It's going to be a while before the Oaks. Probably, the Oaks probably won't get to be in the uh, bonus situation tonight. And that was Roberts' second foul. Here's Tillotson. He had a three wide open. Didn't want to take it. Passed it up to... Aho. Well, you can't blame him. The two that he's tried have come up just a little bit flat. He's probably going to have to just refine his range. Getting it, you know, you don't want Aho for three. There's the three that you want. Get, get that. But again, you don't want to make excuses for the guy, but you do have to let him get just back into the flow of basketball. And a turnover. Here come the Oaks. Back out. Aho's been hot, but he gives it up inside off the glass. No, didn't even make it there. And unfortunately, Lovelace <laughs> he caught it yeah. out of bounds. Skied for the rebound and landed out of bounds. So the Oaks had a chance, couldn't come up with anything. And now they press again. Supel breaks the press. Up ahead to Miller on the baseline. Nice move by Roberts. Nate Roberts has come up with six points here, all six points for the Red Hawks here in the fourth quarter so far, and all of them have been very easy buckets. Yeah, just getting himself in position, recognizing that at the end of the end of the fast break, coming off those presses, he's going to be able to get an easy layup. And now the Red Hawks have increased their lead, 41-24 over the Oaks, with 3:36 left. A foul down there. Well, timeout. And that goes to number 20, and that's his third. Not and sure who that was on. Yeah. Athens. Well, I think they called it on Chad Miller. I don't know if he was on the floor. Uh, timeout. Yes, he was. <laughs> was he, he was okay. on the floor. Well, it was on him then. The timeout down on the floor. Yeah. As we see John Sebastian talking to the Oaks again. Tough situation he's in. But he has got this team uh, to almost a respectable status when you're playing it, so you can't really say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have an easy game now. Last year he had a really tough time. Yeah, sure well, we saw last back. year they really, you know, could almost enter the game not even thinking they had a chance to win. This year, you know, aside from the five wins they had they've had when we mentioned earlier, they've had a couple overtime losses, a couple one point losses in regulation. It's just a matter of getting the confidence now to win those games. And you know, you get get a few more kids within the school to come out for basketball, maybe get a you know a couple of football players or a couple of track guys. And you also just get the young guys that you've got there used to playing with each other a little bit more and eventually you get the program up to that 500 level and then you try to move beyond that. So the work cut out for them. And we have 3.30 left in the game. From outside, Tillotson couldn't hit again. Ball up for grabs and Agdesarian with the rebound. Agdesarian. Goes up with it, and he's fouled. 
He could have passed off to Roberts, but it was 50-50 uh, really who the man was going to cover down there. Yeah, I can't blame you. Know, you you don't want too much passing because yeah. that's that is where you get those three second calls. They kind of got away with it once in the first half. And at this point, take what you can. Only three minutes left, a little over three minutes. Just get the free throws and you know, he's been the main man all night anyway. Yeah. He took it right to oh. the hoop. Yeah, that time didn't, hit. <laughs> didn't make that one, but he's actually done pretty decently at the line. Not you know, not nothing in the ninety percent range, but you know. And he misses the second, so Mahan couldn't hit that time at the line. Team still up 41 24, though, and a commanding lead here in the fourth quarter. And uh, another whistle down on the court. You know, Pogue with a blocking foul up top. So Pogue picks up the foul on Ajo and Lovelace to inbound. And they, well, the Oaks probably will get into that one in one situation that before the night's over. Going two away. Trying to make something happen. Ball knocked away. Supel kept it in bounds and just couldn't get around. Poe couldn't get around the referee. He might have went to flying into the stands though if he did well, try to get that one. That, that's that, that's a real smart play by Supel and it's something that's overlooked a lot. He was saving the ball out of bounds under his own basket and instead of just trying to throw it to a teammate where you always end up giving up easy layups. Threw it. Far as far away as he could, so the worst thing that happens is it's a turnover and they have to restart their offense fresh, but nothing easy for him. Oaks started over again. Bonskar in there. Tillotson for three. Nope, it's short. Just doesn't have it tonight on the three-point range. Bonskar can't hit the short jumper. And the Red Hawks come up with a good hustle by Miller to knock it away. And a foul called on Tillotson. Yeah, he was. Well, football took over and uh, should send Supo to the line. I guess we will find out if, if he's in there for free throws now. Yeah. It's a little mad scramble for the ball and uh, until it's in there, a little roll block. So Supo at the line. Ryan with four points on the night. Something going on in the stands there. Uh, is it a panty raid down? Um, you know, Supo he, hits here. He's auditioning for virtual video. I hope he didn't take off his underwear. It looked like he was holding some kind of. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Well, he knows he's on yeah, though. He's going nuts. He's real over proud there. of him. That, that's cool. <laughs> so I think he, he's auditioning for roadshow video. Oh, that's, I see. You know, that's the big thing. These these kids want to impress, impress Bubba and Pat and get on the air. Oh yeah. Supo can't hit. He's uh, one of two from the line. So it stays 42 24 now. Agnesarian passing up ahead. Supo layup. He's got it. That's the first real breakaway that we've seen. That's a tough layup. Yeah. You know, and he had an open man and he reversed that and had to, had to really put that soft against the glass. Supo ups his. Scoring to seven. Inside and Bagdasarian comes up with the shot. Supel trying to get a pass half board and he's fouled by Hurd. Hurd now no. probably coming up with his they didn't third call or foul. fourth. They didn't call the no, foul. They no just foul. called it out of bounds. Ball knocked out of bounds by Hurd and here comes the bench. I think the officials think it's going to take a real hard foul for the officials to yeah. put someone at the line at this point. <laughs> And the starters take a seat for the Red Hawks. Good job by that guy right there. Back to Sarian Bahan coming up with 15 points on the night. Five of ten from the free throw line. And here come the Red Hawks. In there. Berenstein. Over to Hall. Brad Hall in there, number 10. Berenstein now. Trying to drive. And oh, oh, Vinny Johnson up there. And there's a foul underneath. You're going to get a uh, Lafitte's going to get a couple free throws here. Yeah, Lafitte was hammered under there. I think I'm expecting to see. Look at some guys out there that haven't been playing this game and 
wonder, you know, how much playing time they get all year. Still some shoving going on. Watch. Oh, yeah. Watch. You know, some elbows get flying. the big guys in there. And oh, that, ow, man, that hurt. That's the one Lafif didn't like. That hurt. And yeah, there's some shoving going on after there. Who did he hit that? I think he hit uh, Bonsker right in the nose. Yeah, the, you could see oh. at the free throw line, bo both the uh, Oaks players who were down there <laughs> got hit in the face. Oh, they, they were rubbing their nose. Okay. So it's getting ugly down there. Yeah, you know, and you see some of these guys that don't play like, you kind of figure the minute they get the ball, they're going to travel just because, you know, you get excited and you see the open basket. If I'm one of these guys, first time I touch it, shoot it. Shoot the thing. Let's see how rough it's getting under there. Here you see Hall give it up. And Berenstein tries to drive. Now look at this. Here's a Vinnie Johnson layup. Whoa. And that hammers him. Well, didn't go in. Vinnie would have made it. And yeah. Lafif gets Watch that left elbow there. right in the nose. There. Yeah. Oh, man. And that was uh, number 44, Bonskar, in there with the hand. And then after that, Lafif kind of threw some elbows. Oh, Billy the, Curly stuff going yeah. on down there. <laughs> Even the refs smiling down there. They know uh, it's going to be a little uh, frenzy down there for the next minute and 30 seconds. Hey, again, you've got guys in there that you know, you don't know how many times they get a chance to score and you know, can't really blame them. There's Lafif at the line. And this is his first. He'll get one more. 44-24 the score. 130 left here at Troy Athens High School. The Red Hawks dominating the entire way against the Oaks in this one. This one goes off. Who's going to come up with it? Finally, Lovelace comes up with it. Lovelace pulls up at the key nice inside. Bonscar comes up with it though, keeps it inbounds to Hurd. Clark now working on Hall. And Lovelace to Bonscar and Clark. Schumer, Schumer in the paint, puts it up, it's short. Rebound, Oaks. Bonscar making his own room, couldn't get it though. Rebound taken by Hall. Brian Hall driving, dishes it off to an unsuspecting Hoff. Well, Hall had uh, had some room to lay it up in there, yeah. even though he was in traffic. Should have done it. <laughs> but you know, I think of the group out there, I think Hoff's the only senior, so I guess he's the guy you should go to get the shot or you know, something. Clark now. Clark throws it up off the glass. Nope, it's short. Inside, heard. Nobody really going up with any uh, determination. And here we go. Let's see Clark. Clark throws it up and in. Greg Clark right underneath puts it down. And he's got three points. Closing seconds here at Troy Athens. Steve will get another trip to the line. You said that you really have to get hammered to get a foul call. And uh, you could hear it up here. Getting the hammer down there, too. <laughs> and that guy did it again right there, number 44, Bonscar, hammering Lafitte. No, he enjoyed it. Substitution checking in. Ooh. Actually, no. Our monitor right there. Uh, couldn't tell if there was a sub coming in, but uh, they, that is the fifth foul. That's what they were saying. So the fifth foul for Bonskow. And they got to send someone in, and uh, okay, they finally do. Beers. So there is a substitution yes. coming in. We, so yeah. I was right with my. Yeah, the John Darrow coach just didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason Beers comes back in. Beers with four points, the starting center. himself after the game. He's had a chance to get three from the free throw line. This will be his fourth. He better make this one. He's got to come up with this one here. There you go. So the thief comes up with his third point. He had a field goal earlier in the game. He's got it. You can't go over for fourth line. Don't foul, guys. There we go. Get a <laughs> shot off. Get a good one here. There we go. Oh. Boomer. Had a chance to get one right before the buzzer, and it didn't go in for him. 
And a tough night for the Oaks as uh, we saw a lot of balls go in and out and they just wouldn't fall for John Sebastian tonight. They couldn't get their layups couldn't really never gotten any kind of flow and for you know the at Red Hawks didn't get into much of a flow but at least they were able, able to convert a little bit of transition get some offensive rebounds and they were able to prevent the Oaks from getting second shots on the other end. Well, the Red Hawks dominate this one John Kroll's team coming out and coming out strong in the first quarter and dominating the rest of the way. They win at 45 26 here at Athens High School the final score and we'll be back to wrap it up from Troy Athens right after these messages stay with us. Where are Pat and Brad going to be this month. You'll find out on the next edition of Roadshow Video. Each month, Pat and Brad take you to a new and interesting location. Check out what Southeast Michigan has to offer and watch some of the best hit videos on television. That's Roadshow Video, tonight at 9 on TCI 63. The final score on the TCI Game of the Week, the Red Hawks 45 and the Don Dero Oaks 26. And Joe really uh, the down arrow Oaks had trouble getting started and it was uh, pretty much the same thing the rest of the way as you take a look at the scoring by quarters 13 to 4 in the first they stayed even pretty much in the second and then the third and the fourth they just couldn't well, keep up with that yeah, the even numbered quarters were you know yeah. better for them but that the difference there was no consistency and they really just that bad start kind of kept them out of it they never really had a chance after that. And the leading scorer, uh, 15 points for Bahan Bagdasarian, led all scorers tonight. He had a pretty good game. Five of 10 from the line, and he had five uh, field goals from the floor, so he had a pretty good night. And not only that, but defensively came up. Uh, yeah, who knows with, how with many? The intensity. He had a lot of rebounds. We're not sure how many. We don't keep that. But he had a lot of rebounds, three or four steals, a couple block shots, just did a little bit of everything. Even made a couple of assists on the fast break to, I believe, uh, Roberts and Miller. Just a good all-around game. And he fired up the Red Hawks to a victory here tonight. Next week, don't forget to tune in. We'll be in Clawson to see the Trojans battle the Avondale Yellow Jackets. You can catch all the action next Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. right here on TCI 63. The Yellow Jackets always a running gun and team. And a cool logo. See that? <laughs> you like that? Yeah. yeah. All right. There you see it. <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe had to mention that. It's the Fighting Yellow Jackets. And uh, that's the game next week. For Joe Abramson, I'm Dave Zorin, and for all of our hardworking TCI staff and those not so hardworking, as you mentioned right. before, yeah. Joe wanted me to mention those that don't do that, but they all do. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week as the Clawson Trojans take on the Avondale Yellow Jackets. Final score here, the Red Hawks 45 and the Dondero Oaks 26.